Hi y'all, welcome back to another video. It's your favorite lock hair. Energy. Anyways, thank y'all so much for tuning in. I appreciate all the support and yeah man, we just hit 70, I think it's 70 something. And man, that's a lot. That, that That's a lot, man. And I'm really thankful that all of you guys subscribe to me and y'all share and y'all like my videos. It really means a lot and it really means that y'all really vibing with your girl. And yeah, I wanna, I wanna thank y'all so much for just staying here. All right, man, we're gonna get into this video. This is a talk video. Basically, I'll be talking about my journey and how I embrace my femininity. So, um, basically, growing up for me has been, you know, full of emotions, full of happy, sad. It was, it was like, it was full of everything. I basically was born and raised in a Christian household, you know, so my life was basically surrounded around Christian Christianity. So I never used to party or like, you know, what the generation now is doing. I never used to do those things because my life was strictly in the church. Like, that's all I know. That's all I was thought. So, yeah, it it. it it was a lot. Um, as a child in primary school, I never used to really get on myself or like surround myself with the women, with the, the females and stuff. I used to always just be with the boys. I used to be a tomboy. I used to be playing basketball a lot. I used to be in a field. Sometimes I used to have um, afternoon classes and I used to ditch afternoon classes just to play basketball with the boys. Like I never used to like make up I never used to like the girly things. I wasn't really interested. I used to be like, hey, where y'all putting on makeup and y'all in school, dog? Like, what's going on? Like, we you putting on lipstick and you're going to play grung? But that makes sense. So I never, I never used to like all of those things. I used to be like, nah, dog, that, 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 that thing ain't for me. I'm going to just play ball and have the time of my life. And it's like back then, back then I wasn't really developed. So I used to just be, and these never used to jiggle. <laughs> I never had those back then. So I used to just be free. Like I feel like an actual boy because I wasn't developed and I wasn't mature then. So I used to have a time of my life. So, you know, going into high school now is when the rubber was started. It's when the braga braggaram we found all the potholes and you enter pothole in Eastern is braggaram. My high school experience was braggadam, a whole lot of braggadam. And that what shaped me into who I am. But we're gonna we gonna get to that. Yeah. Cool. So basically from farm one to farm four has been, you know, it was very hectic for me. Cause in those in those years of you know, in my early days of high school, I lost a sibling and it was very traumatic, you know. And the kids back then were rootless as hell. So I had thinking, you know, I'ma probably, you know, continue going to school so that I could bury my trauma in the back of my mind. And I thought by going to school, focus on my schoolwork, trying to get, you know, work done would have helped me to ease the pain. But it did not. Instead, I just bury my trauma in the back of my head not only that the bullying started and it was a bullying and it was a trauma that i was enjoying so i never used to really focus on my parents even though they used to bully me for just being skinny tall and long long bad just skinny tall and i i don't know why they 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 never used to like me oh my god they never used to like your girl but it's okay anyways so the four years from the four years of, of high school has been crazy and I literally had to put my foot down in form four against my bullies and I had to make a rational decision and I had to you know say yo listen it's either you gonna leave me alone 
or we're gonna have to fight because I am tired of the bullying. Like, you guys ain't gonna continue bullying me because I tall and I skinny and I long. They got all long people out here. They got poor and thing. Like, what, what, like, so I literally had to stand up for myself. Because, you know, if I didn't stand up for myself, who would have stand up for me? And I basically had to program my mind to, you know, so that yo like them go always be haters i mean what i'm saying if you're gonna hate us being popping right it, they go always be haters in the wall it just how you gonna go about your business and how you gonna walk your way up with the haters watching you so yeah i literally had to put my foot down and say no say no to everything say no to what they tell me and i just move along like the bullion stop like nobody could attack to me like everybody know anna garden for the shy she never used to talk a lot she should just hold things in her um in her mind and she never used to say anything so after i put my foot down in farm four going on to farm five and i just let everybody in the grandmother know that you can't bully me because i don't want to be played with Everybody here thinking I are enemy or something. I the was like I the was. Cause I was flinging by left, right, and center. Not saying that profanity is okay. It was just my way to tell them people to leave me alone, you know. So they, you know, normal people. When your family needs to for yourself, it's like, what? I never know you to act like that. You not Christian. You don't go to church. So basically, my whole, my whole, you know, me, my late of high school, I was just standing up for myself and I would let things be known that you can't bully me because I am who I, who I am who I am and I am who God says I am. And I literally, it have days where I don't feel so down and the depression, it hit me and I would cry. Because it's, it's a lot, you know, like those kids in high school were rootless. You couldn't tell them nothing. If y'all know Elmo Stout, if y'all know ESHS back then, even now, and kill, the, the kids still rootless. Don't come for me. But they're still rootless, and it's like, what's going on? But as I was saying, you know, <clears throat> leaving high school, I wasn't, I still wasn't feminine. I was tomboy, I still had my tomboy ways. I, the reason why I still had my masculine ways and all of that is because I was, I was scared. I was practically scared of being looked at. I didn't really like the attention. Trust and believe. I did not like the attention. Like, I used to be minding my business walking along the road and people used to be watching me. They'd be like, what if, like, what are you watching me for? Like, you see something that have an X on my forehead? Like, I, I, I never used to like the attention and that used to stop me from being feminine and dressing feminine and acting feminine because i feel like if i'm more masculine or, or if i do um if i do make myself look like this and act like a nigga i'm like yeah man yeah man like nobody go nobody gonna talk to me and holler at me like if i just do like this and walking down the road to a bright bread or groceries nobody gonna talk to me but instead of like when I do all of that, they were still talk. They, they, they were still talking to me. They were still talking to me. Like I be trying on this, this, the baggiest of clothes. I be wearing hats and thing, and I never used to have my locks back then. My hair will. Anyways, but I was basically doing the most, wearing the most masculine clothes, and it never used to stop. So I had to let myself know. I'd be like, nah, I can't. I can't put on myself just because. You know, people watching me, niggas watching me. Let me say that I'm not people, niggas. <laughs> Those high back men was watching me, and well, men in general. Cause I feel like if I say high back men. Anyways, but yeah, I had to let myself know that I need to be me. I feel like I'm missing out on stuff, and I feel like I am not being who I am because I am, I am, I am scared of the of the attention and what the attention could bring. So, I had to let myself know, like, yo, you need to get together, and I started to dibble and dabble in femininity, 
around college in my first semester. And that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because mind you, growing up as a tomboy, I never used to give people hugs. I wasn't friendly. I never knew how to hold conversations properly. Like, if a person was to come up to me right now, I would hug them. The Emma Garden back then. But, yo, we're going on, bro. They're gone. Like, I would do that. But now, it's just strictly hugs. And, you know, just love and everything. And, you know, I came a long way. I hope this video makes sense. But I came a long way. And, insane what i'm saying and in, in you know sharing my story i just want to tell anybody out there if you're going through what i went through or if you're going through anything similar yeah you guys ain't by yourself reach out to me talk to me that's what this video is for to shed light to to all of those things you know it's okay to be you it's okay to it's okay to be you like on a whole like there is only one you. There's only one Anna done. Only one energy. Only one Anna in this world. You have the ability to change you. You have the ability to do things. You have the ability to get your goals. So, if you don't get your goals now, you can't cuss anybody. You can't cuss anybody but you. Because your goals, not Tom and Jerry, your goals. So, you know, just sharing my story. I just want to let everybody, you know, let you know whoever listening to me right now, y'all. You know what I mean? You guys mean by yourself. Embrace who you are. Embrace your femininity, your masculinity. I hope I said it right. <laughs> but embrace all of those lovely things because that is what makes you unique. Embrace being weird. Embrace being special embrace being embrace everything that makes you you because there is only one you there ain't no other controller on the side just plugging you know somebody that somebody can have the access to that if you don't want to be with your life anymore somebody could just pick up the control and say hey i'm gonna operate your life for you no you have the controller and god have the controller only he got a controller you can do it you could do anything that you put your mind to. So, in conclusion, in conclusion, you could do it, man. Just embrace who you are. Be who you are for your prey. Because nobody going to do the things for you but you. Yeah. I hope, I hope this was very, very inspirational to you guys. And I hope it makes sense. Uh, it made sense to me, but I hope it makes sense to you. <laughs> but man, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna be doing more videos like this because there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things that has been going on in the BVI that needs to be talked about, and we are gonna talk about it. Trust and believe. We are gonna talk about any and everything. Trust and believe. So, thank y'all for watching again. Stay tuned for more juicy talks. Cause we're gonna be we're gonna be doing a lot of them. Not only that, watch out for a volleyball video. Cause we're soon to the crunch time. We're hitting the playoffs, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My team, of course, the best of the best. Cami, you're the best man. But stay tuned for a video from the volleyball. Stay tuned for a volleyball video. Yay. <laughs> But yeah, thank y'all so much for watching. We're going to head out. I have a class at 7. But thank y'all so much. Spread love and light. And, you know, be kind. Ain't going to hurt to be kind, guys. Love y'all. Your favorite Lockhead signing out.